everybody's video Bob and uh, here with the trusty Crevo bus today we're gonna talk about some power options some emergency power options there's gonna come a time where maybe you get to a park or you get to a show or venue or generators messed up whatever the situation is and you need to get some electricity now you're not always gonna have 50 amps hanging around that you can plug into for this thing now on my rig and, and a lot of rigs like this, uh, you've got this big honking thing, the big twisty 50 amp service. Now that's impossible to find. The only time you find a, a, a plug like that is maybe on like certain major commercial generators and things. You, you generally aren't going to find that. So you have to have an adapter like this one. You know, mine plugs into this and then I can plug into the 50 amp service. So whenever I go to a campsite or a park, I have to use this adapter. It's something that you're going to want to have. But that's not really what we're going to talk about. Chances are most RVs, most play, you know, have at least this, your standard 50 amp plug. Now, I wanted to show you this thing. This thing is cool. This thing splits into two uh, 30 amp plugs. Now, this is what you have on your most of your smaller RVs, and most campsites have this one and then they have a few of the 50 amp services for the bigger rigs like ours but if you're watching this and, and you have a smaller rig don't fret this is this a little one but what makes this cool is this splits off into two uh 30 amps now here's where it gets interesting i bought this cable not for the two 30 amps now, now what you could use this for by the way is i uh, the most recent video that i uploaded was of the portable generators let's say you had uh you know two 2000 watt generators that had 30 amp service you could plug this you could make your own parallel kit without having to have a separate parallel kit by simply plugging these in if those generators had it so for instance if you had two 3000 watt hondas that have these on there uh you'd have plenty of power but here's where things are getting tricky check this out this i got i got this little adapter here and all these there'll be links in the video description to get all of these uh so that you can find them this one goes from a 30 to your basic regular run-of-the-mill electrical plug so here's here's the plan with this if you're ever in a real dire situation I've got, I've got two of these the other plug is uh, I would put the other plug around the corner but anyway I have two of these the idea is you plug your bus into that you run two 110 cords to two separate circuit plugs right those are each going to be 15 to 20 amps so let's say you're uh you're doing a gig or whether you're working or whatever you're anywhere whether it's somebody's house or a venue or building if you can just find two 110 outlets you could take a 100 foot cable and run it to two separate circuits and uh, you may not be able to run everything okay because you're only going to be pulling 30 to 40 amps which is plenty okay if you got two 15 amp circuits or two 20 amp circuits plugged in and if you find two commercial plug-ins that may have the you know 25 or 30 amp but chances are it's going to be a 15 amp with 30 amps you can run one maybe two air conditioners and most of the stuff on your bus or your rv so that is a really cool thing to have i've never actually had to use this yet but i have it i'd rather have it than than not have it you want to have a nice collection of just about everything that you can find out there, you know, like a, a you know a 50 to a 30 amp connection. I've got several different versions of those, you know, just in case. Um, every different type, I carry every different type of adapter that there is. I mean, even <laughs> which this is nuts. <laughs> A 50 amp twisty into that 110 but in a worst case scenario if all I could get is a little bit of 110 that I can run some basic stuff just the fridge and I'll be able to run an air conditioner heater but you can run a battery charger or run just the lighting just basic emergency stuff just like this is the same one going to a 30 amp service you know there's gonna become a time that you might be traveling and you end up at some podunk 
you know, little RV campsite. They don't have 50 amp service or it's sold out. And all you can get is, you know, some some uh, smaller power up there. <clears throat> you gotta make do with what you got. Now, I highly recommend you invest into extension cords. Check this thing out. Look, I got one of these too. So, <laughs> I got, I, so what I did was I ordered every single possible combination of power cord. This is probably 500 bucks for the power cords. You got 50 into a 30 and a 110. <laughs> and then this big mamma jamma, which I haven't had to use yet. Good lord. <laughs> okay, you get the idea. It's heavy. <laughs> I need to work out. Um, I think this is maybe 50 feet or 75 feet. I, I don't know how long this is. But you. <laughs> You're not always gonna be able to get right up next to the plug. There's gonna come a time where, like I said, something weird has happened. And uh, here's an example of when I had to use one of these extensions before on my other rig. Went to a place, they said, look, um, the, the space that'll hold your 40 foot bus, the power's out in it. Uh, but there's another power around the corner. So if you've got an extension cord, I'm like, oh, okay. So I had to run 50 feet of extension cord to plug in. So I just wanted to share with you uh, some of my tips and tricks on what I do when I'm traveling to be prepared, you know. I, I never was an actual Boy Scout, but I like to be prepared, have every possible combination of plug with me so that no matter what, I'll be able to plug in in some situation. You know, now I generally uh, am running on battery, or, or I mean uh, on, on my generator, and then I also have, uh, you know, my inverter battery backup as well. But anything can happen. Your inverters can go out, your generator can go out. I'll tell you a crazy story. I did a gig uh, from Dallas all the way to upstate New York, uh, Cooperstown, I think it was. And uh, this was a long drive, and we were towing a car. Now, the car we happened to be towing was the Ghostbusters Ecto-1, uh, which is a, you know, old vintage Cadillac hearse. And it was a festival, and they wanted the car there, so we towed the car up there. The reason I told you about the car was because our generator failed as soon as we got there, and this was August. No, it was July, I think. It was hot. And it wasn't in the Supremo bus, it was in the one, the, uh, a four travel that I had right before here. Anyway, the point is we had a uh, generator and I believe at that time it was a 7,500 watt. This thing's running 17,000, okay. Generator fails. We're scrambling trying to find a generator. Couldn't, you, you can't just go get a, a diesel generator. You, you can't, there's nowhere you can go get a diesel generator for a bus or an RV just off the shelf. They don't have this, okay? So I went down to Lowe's. I bought an 8,000 watt gasoline generac generator for a thousand bucks. I put it in the back of the station wagon, rolled down the windows. The generator is running in the back of the car with the windows down. I bought a little shop fan and hung it in the window to help exhaust. <laughs> The, the fumes and also cool it down. We ran the extension cord that we had over the hood of the car. I wrapped towels around the cord so it wouldn't rub the paint and put tape on them. Then ran it up over the roof. I bought some uh, t straps and screwed them into the RV because I had no choice. And then ran it <laughs> into the uh, bay and plugged in and we drove all the way from New York back to Texas having to stop every six to eight hours to fill this thing up with gasoline and that's how we ran the air conditioners on the way back. These are the things that you you might be facing because when you're stuck in a situation where literally no amount of money is going to help you because you just can't get you know 
uh, a diesel generator installed at the blink of night, it just, it's not gonna happen. They're like, yeah, we can get to you in a couple of weeks or uh, sometime next month. And I'm like, no, 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 it's hot now. I'm hot now. So that's what we had to do. So I've learned a few of those lessons from traveling all around the country and in adverse conditions. And, and I actually carry an extra portable generator, the one, uh, just like the one we did on the video before, I keep an extra generator in the bay. Now it's not enough to run the air conditioners and things, but it is enough to get you out of a pickle. I had a situation where, again, it was a hot situation. I was up at a, a music festival and um, the generator was fine, but the electrical fan that cools the generator failed. And in the course of trying to fix the two, we killed the battery that went to the generator and also the battery that went to the bus. So I couldn't start the bus and I couldn't start the generator and nobody had a jump box. So luckily I had that portable uh, little generator with me. I used it to charge electrically the battery in the thing so that we could start the generator. I'm telling you, when you're out on the road, it doesn't matter sometimes. You could be a rich, wealthy person. No amount of money is gonna help you in certain situations. The only thing that's gonna help you is being prepared. So if you're willing to drive around in an expensive rig like this, if you can dedicate yourself a nice drawer like I have here for all your, your little electrical connections and be prepared uh, for any situation, even though you can see these have the tags on them, I've never even used most of these, but I have them and if the, if I, if I can close the door, if the situation arises, I will be prepared. So this is some of my tips and tricks uh, for you to know. Uh, make sure you carry, like, look, at, look at all this. I can't, these haven't even been open, but these are heavy duty, 100 foot power cord. These are the ones that I plan to use just in case uh, I have to do that little splitty thing as I told you between the two circuits. Look at this, this thing is only a couple of bucks I have from Harbor Freight and it, it's just your basic solderless terminal assortment with, you know, never been open, but I have it just in case. Uh, you know, I threw some extra pliers in there. Um, got a screwdriver kit. This is, I mean, I have, actually, I have two complete fuel systems. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, two, I have a, two complete uh, tool kits is what I was trying to say uh, in there. So I'm, I'm a little bit over prepared. But this is a 1990 bus. It's now almost 30 years old. Now, these things are pretty hardcore and uh, they're really reliable, but you gotta be prepared. So, hey, thanks for watching our channel. Make sure to subscribe and uh, here's our next video. I'm Video Bob. I'll see you out on the road.